both the BJP and the Congress are looking for allies in the battle of 2024. So are the allies the key to the battle of 2024 for the new UPA or the extended NDA? Let me throw this open to our experts, those who are joining us uh, this evening to give us a sense of why are these uh, groupings important and how it is going to have an impact on the upcoming election. We are being joined uh, by, at this moment by Smita Prakash, editor ANI. We have uh, Mr. Sandeep Shastri, director academics NITTE, uh, also education trust and national coordinator of Lok Niti Network. We have a senior journalist, a political editor of Hindustan Times, Mr. Vinod Sharma, joining us this evening as well. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen and ma'am, for joining us. I want to start by asking you, Mr. Sandeep, Shastri, why is it so important that suddenly, just ahead of the elections, whether it's a party which has you know, zero number of Lok Sabha MPs or even zero number of uh, you know, MLAs have become so important for each groupings, whether it is the opposition or the NDA, which now says it's 38 versus 26? Uh, Ankit, this is an important question that you have raised. I think the fact that you have an election less than a year from now, the NDA wants to top up its numbers. They have twice now got a majority on its own, the BJP. But now they realize that it may be useful to have a larger basket and have an NDA which will also uh, add to their strength. So they want to very clearly top up their numbers. And that's why this effort. And also remember, though you may have parties within the NDA who have maybe a zero membership in Lok Sabha today, I think we are looking at the next Lok Sabha and also we are looking at the NDA trying to sow division within the opposition. So that I think is a crucial factor. And Ankit, when you look at the opposition, uh, it's interesting that the slogan that you see behind as they sit together, they say united we stand. And that I think is where the critical question will be. Mm. How united, for how long united, and will it be united till the end? Because you'll remember in the earlier years, the slogan used to be united we fall and divided we stand. So I think they would want to reverse that. <laughs> and all the three committees that you talked about are basically aimed at that unity. But right. I get my final point. I think tomorrow we will get to see whether this unity is simply an anti-BJP glue yes. that holds them together, or is this unity based upon any common policy perspective, a common strategy that they have. Ravi Shankar Prasad put it uh, quite interestingly, and I don't know whether they will fall into that bait. Right. He said, Bharat is ready, but we don't know who is the groom. Yeah. I think the the clever thing the opposition should do is not select a groom because the moment they do it, the battle is lost even before it has begun. Absolutely. And Smita Prakash, I mean, that's where the BJP will keep poking them, isn't it? To name their chief uh, prime ministerial candidate against Narendra Modi, they would want that presidential kind of battle. But for all the criticism that the BJP has seen under Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the nine years, that they have not been able to keep their old allies together, tomorrow they are rolling almost a red carpet. They are saying 38 versus 26. Well, uh, I think uh, very interesting things which are happening uh, tomorrow. One, that uh, Mr. Modi is fronting this meeting of the NDA. That I find interesting. Uh, I think the the uh, the message is clear that as far as the NDA is concerned, uh, it's not something that has been brushed aside by the BJP. And that's what the BJP would like to uh, send a message to its potential allies that it's the the next election for the uh, for 2024 is going to be fought by Mr Modi at the helm and those who hitch their wagon to the NDA uh, to the NDA ride are going to have Modi campaigning for them hmm. so if you have a Modi campaigning for them uh, that would ensure a victory is what they would like to tell uh, allies and potential allies so that i think is an interesting thing that despite two back-to-back -back foreign visits and a lot on his uh, platter with the G20 coming up, Mr. Modi has decided that politics is something which is extremely important, domestic right. politics. So he's going on with that. And I think breathing life into, uh, into the NDA, which was faltering, which was um, in the ICU, if I may say, um, and uh, seeing that, you know, the opposition unity moves, which were being ridiculed by many people in the uh, BJP is not something to be taken lightly. They right. have lost an election 
uh, in the past with Mr. Vajpayee as Prime Minister, they have lost uh, to a, you know, a smattering of political parties who got together to make it. Uh, as far as the what Dr. Shastri was pointing out about the background saying united we stand, quite interesting that it was a united front which was born uh, uh, with the Janta Dal which came into uh, power Absolutely. Uh, with, from Bengaluru. So it was the united front. They still don't have a name, but I doubt whether they would use the name united in, uh, they would use the term united in their new name because... I don't think with Sonia Gandhi out there, they would want a united front bringing in memories of a VP Singh. It will be interesting to see what name they also choose. But uh, Vinodji, uh, on one hand, there is the NDA, which the Prime Minister, as we said, the 25th year of the NDA, they are trying to strengthen it, uh, keep away the tag that the BJP is a shark, which is eating away parties despite... Various factions, the Ajit Pawar faction going to the NDA, Sharad Pawar faction coming to the, uh, this meeting of the opposition parties, same with Shiv Sena. Uh, but there is still a very clear agenda as far as the uh, NDA meeting is concerned. There is a very clear leader. They have the agenda. They know exactly how these political parties are going to function for them. Is the same clarity, sir, missing in the opposition ranks where they are sitting today in Bengaluru? See, first of all, get one thing very clear. If 24 parties have assembled under one roof today in Karnataka, the credit for that goes entirely to the BJP. Because had it not been for the BJP's politics of coercion, politics of aggression against every political party that is in power in the states, this kind of uh, the semblance of an alliance wouldn't have been there at all. And the same thing was done. It is always uh, wrong to compare two situations, but history teaches us a lot. Indira Gandhi did the same thing, and Janta Party got formed. But those were different days. These are different days. But Indira Gandhi was no less popular than any leader who followed her as prime minister. Mm. So the entire credit for today's gathering at Karnataka goes to the Bharti Janta Party, they should introspect on that. Secondly, as Smita rightly said, it is an attempt to breathe new life into the NDA. Now, this is an issue to deeply reflect that closer to elections, small is useful. But when elections aren't around the corner, small is not useful. It's dispensable. Yeah, it and that is what that is what we learn from the making and unmaking of the NDA in 2000, uh, in 2014 uh, till now. So many parties left and rejoined them. And secondly, is it a law, voluntary joining of the uh, NDA or is it something which has been, uh, okay. they have been induced to join the NDA or whether they are under duress? This is the big question, but these people who are lined up in Karnataka, they are fighting for their survival. They know that if they do not hang together, they might be hanged separately by the BJP, given right. its very strong instinct to demolish and eliminate competition anywhere in politics. Okay. Mr. Sandeep Shastri, if I may bring you in, sir, uh, you know, very important would be, as we were discussing earlier, can the opposition parties, those who are riddled with contradictions, the message cannot be anti-Modism. There has to be a separate, different alternative to how Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the NDA sees India and what they can bring, uh, you know, a different outlook as far as the people are concerned. Is it possible with so many contradicting parties, with so many contradicting, you know, regional aspiration and also their regional interests? Ankit, the meeting is happening in Bengaluru. So I'll use two Bengaluru similes examples to explain this. If you have been to Bangalore, you will know our favorite breakfast dish is chow chow bhat. <laughs> and a wonderful lunch in Karnataka is bisi bede bhat. Chow chow bhat is a combination of sweet and savory. So are you going to bring in diversity, variety of colors through this and maintain a semblance of oneness? Or do you go with our lunch menu of Bisi Bede Bath, which is various lentils brought together, which bring their identities together and create a common entity? 
Hmm. That's what I'm watching to see tomorrow. Uh, are they able to have that net of unity other than anti-BJPism to hold them together? That I think is critical. Uh, and is the diversity that they represent, the authentic diversity that they represent, are they able to resolve possible contradictions at the state level? Okay. Because though it is a Lok Sabha election, the battle is actually fought in each of the 28 states of India. Absolutely. And there are important contradictions in each of them. So will that be something they will be able to effectively resolve is something I'll be looking out for tomorrow. Smita Prakash, with the Bharatiya Janta Party being seen as a very hawkish party for even its allies, uh, you know, like, like Mr. Nitish Kumar also said that the whole attempt of the BJP in the states is to try and completely finish off the regional parties. Many factions are also now going to join the NDA's new entrants. Can this whole attitude of the big brother, uh, you know, as the BJP is, seems to be playing right now in many states, does that in any way, going into 2024, will the BJP try and tone this down as we near the elections? Before I answer that, Ankit, let me go on to that metaphor that Dr. Shastri brought out about uh, Bisi Bhere Bhat. So, uh, I don't know whether you recollect when uh, uh, Vajpayee Ji at India Gate, you know, when he there was this huge speech that he was, this huge crowd that he was addressing, and he said, Wo kya paka rahe hai? Wo khichdi paka rahe hai. And in his typical <laughs> flair, he says, Aur hum kya bana rahe? Hum ghir paka rahe hai. That's how he portrayed it, that there was khichdi, which is like a bisi bhele baad, which is, you know, your rice with lentils. And here it is that we are bringing this delicious pakwan or whatever, savory, uh, sweet dish that we are pre preparing. That having been said, uh, what you pro pointed out about the BJP on a serious note, that uh, yes, it is seen as uh, uh, by by the smaller parties as an aggressive party. Now, mm. why is it seen like that? Because anybody with the kind of brute majority that comes in, uh, obviously they know that it's five years and five years we, we have to bring in our pro policies and programs and now we have the numbers to go ahead and push ahead. Right. As far as the BJP is concerned, they got five plus five. They got 10 years to push forward their agenda and they have been waiting in the wings for 10 years before that. So, you know, here they have 10 years. Now they need that five more years to go ahead with that. As far as the opposition is concerned, this meeting that you had, the first visuals that have come out yeah. doesn't look like they are. there is much of chemistry as such. Uh, there isn't that warmth that one saw in uh, Patna. There seems to be some tension, which we'll get to know, I guess, later when the ground reporters file their stories later tonight as to okay. what is it that happened. You can see that Mamta Banerjee is not looking up from her paper. Sonia Gandhi looks towards her to her right, but Mamta is not looking at her. There's no eye contact between uh, Rahul Gandhi, uh, between um, uh, Lalu Yadav and Nitish Kumar, the three of them sitting next to each other, nothing happening. Omar right. Abdullah uh, and uh, Mehbooba Mufti not talking to each other. So there was some kind of awkwardness. You can see like what you're showing, showing so, Talon and Mamta not talking to each other. Either nobody's talking to each other, just very, very cold vibes. So you need arithmetic, you need chemistry for this thing to work. So the chemistry, uh, Vinodji, possibly is missing there, but the BJP is trying to strengthen arithmetic. Does that in any way also mean that they just can't rely only solely on the Prime Minister to pull them through in 2024? They need these smaller parties to ensure victory in the Lok Sabha elections. First of all, I would uh, like to uh, disagree slightly with uh, Sandeep ji. Uh, he's an expert, uh, a cephalogist. But uh, may I say, sir, this is this is uh, the the big issues are already there on the table. Mm. These are issues of federalism. These are issue, issues of freedoms. These are issues of inclusivity. UCC has already caused fissures in potential alliance of the BJ, BJP with the SGPC coming out openly against it. A whole lot of political parties in the Northeast expressing the reservation against the UCC. And please understand that it's a very difficult period for the opposition, be it the political parties or be it the opposition voices okay. in our country today. And they are going to get together on this score. Secondly, insofar as chemistry is concerned, it will be instructed to see how comfortable is Shinde uh, with Ajit Pawar and 
we have been told in the past, remember, sir, that, you know, when, uh, when Akhilesh Yadav had differences right. uh, with his father, we were told that the same applies to Ajit Pawar today. So may I say one thing? We can do arguments uh, for and against all combinations and formations. Right. But the main objective today of this UPA, regardless of its name, this formation, regardless of its name, or its structure or architecture will be to give a one-on-one -on -one contest at the state level against the BJP or the NDA candidatures. And okay. if that they can achieve in 400 seats or 450 seats right. on the higher side, it will be a contest worth watching, sir. Contest worth watching. And at least we are hoping that it's not a walkover. It's an election worth, I think, worth covering because it is an important election as far as the people of the country are concerned. I'm completely out of time. I thank all three of you for your uh, fantastic anecdotes. And I'm sure, uh, you know, this dinner time with all those anecdotes uh, which are coming through, which came through Kichri, Bisibilebad, Chow Chow Bar. People must already be very, very hungry. And we'll be hungry for some more political news for whatever comes tomorrow from both these meetings. Trust NDTV to get you the 360-degree view. Thank you so much.